Just because I'm Italian, what, what should I do with my hands? Volcor 5 is, is a game changer for banks and uh, fintechs. Our vision at Thumb Machine has always been to uh, develop a core that could serve any bank of any type anywhere in the world. And with Volcor 5, we provided new ways for banks to run multi-entity organization onto a single core. So for example, a bank who may want to run uh, across different brands, different product line, business lines, they can do so into a single core platform. And they can do that by achieving high level of operational isolation controls uh, and not accepting, let's say, the hard trade-offs that they were forced to accept with uh, legacy technologies. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah, for me, the, uh, the release of Vault 5 is really taking it to that next level, really enabling us to serve all the biggest banks, all the banks in the world, all the operational needs that, that they, they could actually want from a core banking platform. So for me, the introduction of our new offerings around business and enterprise, being able to run high volume accounts, being able to run multiple processing groups against um, as part of our end of day offering, I think is just the next step on our journey to really get into be that world's best core banking platform. At Thought Machine, and especially in engineering, we, we've always been obsessed with the design uh, of our products. We, we've seen in the industry that bad designs have led banks in, in difficult positions with their IT stacks. In particular, like what we've noticed is that banks have developed uh, IT stacks in a vertical manner. What it means is that a bank who, for example, runs mortgages, deposit or credit cards have over the year developed vertical bespoke uh, technological stacks. And what this has resulted in is in a fragmented um, uh, ecosystem that uh, can't really cooperate between the different vertical stacks. So right from the beginning, we took a completely different approach. We designed Volcore to be horizontal and universal. When we say horizontal design, what we mean is that Volcore has been designed to run every product of the bank, regardless of the business lines, all on the same platform. So instead of, as opposed to having uh, separate vertical stacks to serve different business lines, Volcore is a single platform for all the products. And we believe this has really been a key ingredient behind um, our, all our designs and to, to enable us to achieve our, to move towards our vision to serve any type of banks uh, all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I don't think we should underestimate that in any shape or form. Um, most of our clients, that's been the kind of the biggest reason as to why they've taken uh, Evolve Core to, in, into production to replace these legacy platforms. I mean, the inability to go in and maintain these products to make the changes across multiple different platforms, many different IT teams that the, the banks need to do it, it's just been crazy. So I think to, for us, for, to be able to tell our clients that you can have as many products as you like, any shape, any size, you can create them and you can manage them and you can change them and take them to production so quickly. Um, and you don't need like tons and tons of technology people to do it because of the way that we've designed and implemented our platform. And I think that's definitely been one of the areas of success for us that we've seen with our clients. When we talk about it in terms of, you know, what's the biggest reason as to, you know, what, what got you for Volt Core and why you were really interested. It's that flexibility to actually own the product themselves and to maintain it and to be able to create new products A lot of banks are still running on really legacy technology behind the scenes. In some cases, this technology is even is many decades old, and this is really holding them back into how they can innovate, into the pace of change that they can afford to, and ultimately the customer experience that they are able to, to provide their customers. And we know the issues that they've had has been the inability to uh, create products or to reduce their costs because to manage the products or manage the platforms requires a huge amount of resources um, from the technology teams to the business people. It requires a huge amount of time and effort and even then they're still unable to move it forward. And for me, if we start looking at what we've done with Vault 5 um, and what it really brings to our clients, we're able to offer our clients the ability to actually manage everything in one place. Not only can you do it in one place, but it also costs you a lot less than it does at the moment with your existing core banking platforms that you're using. Yeah, Kerry, I mean, you're absolutely right. And so often banks have expressed the desire to want to, um, let's say, reduce, simplify their infrastructure, simplify the, the number of cores they run. Uh, and this has kind of 
has been one of the driving principles behind what we've introduced with Vault 5. And so with Vault 5, uh, banks are indeed able to, for example, launch a product across different geography uh, and do so with a lot of library usability, with a lot of ease of configuration to manage the, uh, the complexity of time zones without having to kind of relaunch a new core in every region. Looking at actually what our clients could do previously to this version of Vault, and even now with this new version, it just takes it to the next level for them. Other benefit that Vault 5 brings in this space is, for example, the ability for a bank to um, run uh, their product books across corporate and retail onto the same platform. And again, being able to um, produce uh, reporting or uh, run their end of day operation across different, different, different groups of account uh, in isolation. So to avoid that an upstream problem with the payment system on one side of the bank won't have an impact on, on another part of the book. I think something else maybe we should touch on when we're talking about the, the latest version of, of Vault is also the performance of, of what we've managed to do with this. So our approach to performance is really a no shortcut approach, uh, which is kind of different from what the industry has done, where uh, often our competitors report on um, you know, metrics such as how fast they can write to the database, which is not really uh, translatable into a positive end customer impact. We run a performance test uh, on real instances of the platform running real production volumes uh, and we focus on uh, key journeys real world journeys that a bank would really care about when they're looking at implementing uh, their core banking stack. I completely agree we as part of our upgrade process we involve our clients we understand what it is that they're looking to achieve and what matters to them so the journeys that are relevant to them and what they need to make sure that actually our, our platform can perform at their levels we speak to them and we ask them what it is that they need and what user journeys are important and we test against those we look at real world data not just from what we think we know but actually from talking to our clients and I think as part of what we do in the evolution of the further upgrades of Vault it's all about that it's all about making sure that we're building a product that can surpass the needs of any bank in the world. And I mean, just to add to that, we want banks to take back control of our product roadmap and don't worry about whether the platform can scale. So we want, in this case, banks really to focus on customer acquisition, launching new products to the market and get as many customers as possible and do not worry about whether their core banking engine can scale or sustain uh, new spikes of load. And this is really what Volcor 5 does for our clients. So smart contracts have been, I think it's safe to say, probably a revolutionary element of our, of our core banking platform product itself. Um, now what they do is they enable our clients to write and define their own financial banking products. Now this is huge because it's written in Python, it's relatively simple, it doesn't require tons and tons of technology people to write it, maintain it and implement it. Actually you can have a business person that could understand and define a new financial banking products. We're talking any products. We're talking simple savings accounts, right through to buy now pay laters, to credit cards, to everything you can imagine. If you can imagine the product that you need, you can define it yourself. So for me, the smart contracts uh, are huge to give that power back to the banks to be able to define the products themselves and then change it. And with the release of Vault 5, we've also released a, a new set of capabilities uh, to the smart contract framework and to what banks can do uh, in terms of defining, launching and changing their products. One of the key uh, improvements we've made is related to uh, the support uh, of multi-entity organization. So alongside the platform improvement, we want to offer better way to manage uh, financial products across different business lines or different brands or different regions. Uh, and so that means a more powerful um, parameter system that allows the banks to basically define how their organization is structured and not have that imposed uh, by the core banking system. So in this way, what banks can do now is uh, define um, the groups of account across which they want to change a specific parameter, like an interest rate, and control the rollout of changes through simple API calls. So a bank, for example, could decide to launch a um, uh, fixed interest rate product across five different states and manage the uh, variation of those product with a simple API call uh, that changes the parameter that govern all this, all this product. And I mean, the smart contract really proves the point that 
uh, the only dependencies on a bank to innovate now is their imagination. Yeah, the platform and the vendor really, in this case, doesn't put any limit into what a bank can do. And this is really, I think, the power of the smart contract framework. There's a lot more to come. We keep on investing a lot of our resources into improving the platform because we really want to future-proof the technology that banks run on. We're looking at evolving our integration layer, our applications. We're looking to really push the boundaries of, of what, what more there is to offer. Um, really looking at innovation as well. So I think as we continue on our journey, watch this space. There's still lots more change to come from us so that we can and will be the best core banking platform there is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have tens of clients across the world using our platform to serve very different type of product. And this is really exposing us to the biggest challenges that banks face, even on an operational level. And obviously with a real time event driven platform, we can exploit a lot of this opportunity to build uh, much better solutions that uh, banks have never had uh, and, and, and really leverage the technology we've built so far to provide a lot more automation and a lot more controls to bank. Mm -hmm.